by just thanking you all for being here. It's a gorgeous day in Sioux Falls. What a privilege to be here, and I am I'm very grateful for, uh, for you all showing. I want to start by introducing uh, my family, my wife Sandy, uh, and my two youngest sons, Reggie and Tristan. I have two older sons, Jesse and Cody, uh, who weren't able to be here with us today. Sandy and I have spent a great deal of time in the last year in conversation and thought and prayer about this decision. I have to say that I've wrestled with this decision probably more than As I've taken the time to sort things out in my mind, my focus has become a lot clearer about what's at stake in this race and just exactly what it means to our state and more importantly what it means to our nation. It's caused me to reflect on my ancestors who have given service to this nation. My great-great-great-grandfather came to the United States from France with General Lafayette to fight the Revolutionary War along with four brothers. Uh, the four brothers who came with him lost their lives in that war. My grandfather fought in World War I. My, my father fought in World War II and in the Battle of the Bulge. I have a brother that fought in Vietnam. I have a son, Cody, who's not here, who is currently learning to fly Blackhawks in Rotary Flight School in Alabama. You see, their service and sacrifice to this country was grounded in the fact that they knew they were fighting to protect something much greater than themselves. I feel the same calling to ser serve at a different venue. I believe that we can all probably agree that Washington, D.C. is headed in the wrong direction and is putting our children's future in jeopardy. The $17 trillion question is, what do we do to fix it? Well, I can tell you what we don't do. We don't fix it by maintaining the status quo. We need leaders who are willing to break the mold. Leaders who have the courage to stand strong on conservative values that have made the United States the greatest nation on this planet. We need leaders who do more than just pay lip service to principles like limited government, individual rights, and personal responsibility. It is crucial that we have leaders with integrity who will not compromise our God-given constitutional rights. I will go to Washington to make changes. I guarantee Washington will not change me. The freedoms that we enjoy are in jeopardy by a federal government that's overstepped its boundaries and has far exceeded the intent of our founding fathers. We have too many career politicians in Washington who are addicted to spending and borrowing. We have a president who has veered our country away from the free market system toward big government programs and socialized medicine. We have a judiciary of activist judges who promote the liberal agenda and trample over people's constitutional rights and freedoms. What are some of the results? Well, for starters, our nation has a $17 trillion debt and Congress still can't pass a budget. The early implementation of Obamacare is going to be a bureaucratic disaster that will severely damage small businesses and private sector job growth. The United States Senate just passed an amnesty bill that rewards illegal immigration and will cost us trillions. And it doesn't even address border security. We have an IRS that has abused its power and lashed out at organizations who dare to question the administration's policies and a federal court system that overrules the will of the people in order to redefine traditional marriage. When power goes to Washington, when all three branches of government overreach, when bureaucracy is out of control, our individual liberties will be sacrificed. I want my children and my grandchildren, all the people of South Dakota, to have the same freedoms and opportunities that I've had. That's why I'm running for the United States Senate. I want to continue serving South Dakota by fighting for individual liberty and conservative values in our nation's capital.